anti-racist technology in the US, weird enough productions, earth birth without bias, finequity, justice text, exhale app, thrive equity audits, and Nexus. Hi, my name is Tony Weaver Jr. and I'm the founder of Weird Enough Productions. We're a nonprofit organization that uses diverse comics for social emotional learning and anti-racism in schools. I found it Weird Enough while I was a junior in college as a result of an experience that I had during my first year. While volunteering at a local elementary school, I mentored a black fourth grade student named Nazir. Every time I spoke with him, he loved to tell me about all of his favorite superheroes. But when Halloween was coming up, he told me that he didn't feel like he could be any of them because none of them looked like him. When I looked at Nazir, I thought about myself in middle school, attempting to end my own life due to racism and bullying from my teachers and my peers. My experience with Nazir showed me that my problem wasn't individual, it was institutional. So I started doing research and what I found was staggering. Suicide and depression rates among young people are at a 20 year high. And it was at that 20 year high before quarantine impacted student mental health and made it even worse. 70% of students lack the civic reasoning required to be digital citizens. So even though they're spending lots of time on platforms like Discord, Twitch, and TikTok, they don't have the tools to navigate how it's impacting their self-esteem. Lastly, rising racial tensions have created an especially difficult climate for students of color. When I was in my dark place, the thing that brought me out was manga, anime, video games. I found myself in the pages of underdog heroes that endeavor to keep going and keep trying. So I thought, what if I could use the same thing that helped me to support young people today? And that was where the idea for Get Media Lit came from, an ed tech platform where we combine our comics with lesson plans that improve student literacy, digital literacy, and social emotional learning. The Lit and Get Media Lit is an acronym for Learn, Inquire, and Transform. In Learn Lessons, students learn more about themselves and the world. We take the microaggressions that they encounter every day and give them tools to navigate them in a more positive light and prevent them from happening in the first place. In Inquire Lessons, we give students digital citizenship and critical thinking skills so that they can properly vet sources and have a healthy relationship with the technology that they use on a daily basis. In Transform Lessons, we help students identify their own personal strengths so that they can impact their communities and the world in ways that only they can. And as a result, we've had an amazing impact. We've worked with over 2 million students and 90% of them have reported improvements in mental health. 95% of them have shown improvements in literacy. And that, and that impact has allowed us to have some amazing partnerships. We've worked with Warner Media, who's allowing us to partner with HBO Max and use their platform to get our content in the hands of even more people. We partner with organizations like Samsung that are putting our comics and lesson plans onto every Samsung phone starting in 2022. We've also partnered with organizations like Microsoft and Gucci. We were named champions for change by CNN. And I made history as the first comic writer to ever be selected for the Forbes 30 Under 30 with the national, international team of technologists, authors, educators, and artists, we're working to create impact in the communities that we care about most, to show every young person that as long as you love yourself, you're never too weird, you're just weird enough. Thank you. Kira Johnson, Dr. Shanice Wallace, Shalon Irving. These are just a few of the Black mothers who have died during or after childbirth in recent years. In fact, Black women are 200 and more, 243% more likely to die during this time, with racism and bias being a root cause of this inequity. Current solutions such as anti-bias trainings just aren't working. There's been zero accountability, and instead of transparency, what we have is tick the anti-bias box. But imagine a world where bias-free care was a human right and all of these Black mothers were here with us and with their babies. My name is Kimberly Sales Allers and I'm the founder of Earth, as in the word birth, but we dropped the B for bias. Earth is a dual market app that allows Black women and birthing people to find and leave reviews of their OBGYNs, birthing hospitals, and pediatricians. On the back end, Earth turns those qualitative reviews into quantitative data. Our app surfaces hyperlocal, detailed patient feedback on patient behaviors, bridging the gap between patient and provider to identify where systems are failing and helping those systems to improve. 
Quite simply, we help hospitals learn from the living. By detecting early signs of bias to prevent adverse events, we create community-driven feedback loops and help redefine what anti-racist care looks like by centering the lived experience of Black birthing people. Our community is excited and hospitals are already listening. We launched our first hospital pilot in Detroit with others in the works in Philadelphia, New York, and LA. We have national partnerships with organizations working in hospital using Earth as a community-centered monitoring mechanism, proving Earth's ability to bring equity to quality improvement and patient safety. My team and I are excited and ready to go with your help. We've already raised over $600,000 in grants, but we're coming to the end of that funding cycle. We're looking for more grant funding to build the next iteration of Earth, increase our analytic capabilities, and expand our marketing and engineering. We also need advisors and business partners to support our successful transition to a for-profit social enterprise. Our goal is to become that good housekeeping seal of approval for black and brown birthing people, our consumer beacon for respectful anti-racist care. Join us, together we can make bias-free care a human right. Hi, I'm Brianne, the COO of Finequity, and I want to tell you a story about Matt. Matt has spent over 25 years in prison and came home and has lived in the, the shelter system. Matt was selected for an affordable apartment lottery, but he wasn't able to move forward because he did not actually have a credit score and could not pass the credit check. So he remained in the shelter system. Luckily, he was able to get a part-time job, but the problem now is that sometimes he's not able to get to and from his part-time job because he runs out of money for transportation before his next paycheck. His hope is that if he can keep his part-time job, then he'll be able to potentially save up for an apartment, establish credit, and finally leave the shelter system for good. Matt is not alone. There are over 300,000 formerly incarcerated community members who come home every year and have the hope of being able to sustain the economic progress that they have already achieved after being released. And for about 30% of them, they have an even tougher battle, which is that they're, they're making this journey without even having a credit score. The current solutions that are available to them kind of have their own barriers of entry. The first one being that they're extremely extracted. So at a time where Matt has his lowest earning potential, he's gonna be charged the highest cost um, capital that's extracted. And that'll include things such as upfront deposits, collateral and interest. And even if it's not extractive, he's gonna be caught in a catch 22, which is that to get credit or capital, you usually have to have credit or capital. We're doing things differently here at Finequity, which is we use co-creation and community input to design a digital solution that can be a resource for community members like Matt. By first providing them $150 personal loan to establish credit, providing financial mentorship, and if they need emergency capital so that in the nick of time, they can have a financial cushion wherein a small problem would not spiral into a financial emergency. So a small solution, but with big ramifications. And we're excited to join the MIT Solve Network because you have groups like the Educational Justice Institute that can help us expand the in-reach we already do with individuals living in correctional institutions. And to also help us gain additional inclusion partner, which would be something new for us, but we understand is very closely related to the work that we do. In regards to the funding, we use the funding to really focus on our emergency capital loans because we think that's a part that we haven't been able to pilot and that can help us extend the pilot we have currently now with our credit services. Fundamentally, what we are doing is we are changing what level of financial security formerly incarcerated community members have upon their release making sure that they have easy access to critical resources such as apartments, jobs, phones, utilities, and more. We would like you to join us on this journey. Thank you. Three months into my freshman year attending college in Chicago, the local government released a police dash cam video of an unarmed teenager named Laquan McDonald, who was shot 16 times by a local police officer. The officer received less than seven years as punishment, but without the video, there likely would have been no accountability at all. 
Unfortunately, Laquan's story is not an anomaly. For decades, low-income communities of color have suffered from the impacts of over-policing. The main difference now is that these interactions are being caught on camera. Over 80% of criminal cases today involve some form of video, but this data means nothing without the tools to analyze it. In fact, 93% of Virginia's public defenders said they're completely overwhelmed by the demands of digital discovery. The groups that hold police accountable are at a major disadvantage, and we are working to change that. We're building the first centralized infrastructure for cataloging, storing, analyzing, and sharing audiovisual data in the criminal justice system. Justice Text is an evidence management tool that generates automated transcripts of digital discovery, extracts key legal insights, and makes it easy for attorneys to create clips in preparation for trial. Attorneys use our software to quickly find the 20 second clip in five hours of jail calls that can help exonerate their client. They use it to make sure their clients were read their Miranda rights in interrogations. We have already scaled to major public defense agencies across eight states and signed annual contracts with Virginia's Indigent Defense Commission and the federal defenders in Kansas, Georgia, Texas, and more. These offices serve over 50,000 low-income individuals every single year. I recently spoke with an investigator who said that using justice text allowed her to identify a critical police statement and dismiss her client's case much faster than previously possible. We hope to scale to over 50 public defense agencies and 500 private criminal defense attorneys over the next year. And we have already secured pilots with New York City's mayor's office and Colorado statewide public defender system. We're monetizing our service with a simple subscription model. And this year alone, we've generated over $280,000 in revenue. We hope the MIT Solve community can help us with connections across government and technical mentorship around our speech recognition software. My co-founder Leslie and I are technologists of color who are working every single day to build a more just and restorative criminal legal system. We hope you'll join us. Hi, I'm Katara, founder of Excel App. Excel App is an emotional well being app designed specifically for Black, Indigenous, and women of color to navigate and reduce the impact and effects of systemic racism. I was inspired to create Excel out of the trauma my community was facing last spring and summer. COVID, the killings of Ahmad, Brianna, George, and others brought a level of stress, anxiety, and trauma to my community that was overwhelming. And seeing these deaths play out in our news feed was extremely traumatic. As I was reaching for apps that I normally reach for to manage my stress, I realized they were out of step and out of touch with where I was as a Black woman and where my community was during that time. And while there are 20,000 mental health apps in the market, there weren't any that were specifically designed to support BiWalk in navigating and reducing the effects that racism has. So I decided to create the very thing I was looking for. Excel has representation and that's key. So our content speaks to and reflects the user. Our well-being resources partner with BiWalk in managing unique stressors that takes a toll on our mental and emotional health. We launched in August of 2020 and currently have over 6,000 users in 55 countries. Due to being quarantined, I had to use who I had at my disposal, and that's my amazing family and allies. They stepped up and volunteered their time, creativity, resources to help me launch Excel app. My allies pro bonoed all of their resources to support me. We have five categories of well being meditations, guided breathwork techniques, coaching talks, guided visualizations, and daily affirmations. The mental health app market is expected to grow to over 23% by 2027. Our current business model is free to download, free to use, but we plan to add a pay what you can model and establish partnerships to generate revenue. We plan to build 2.0 of Excel that would add a telehealth component. We're 
our users can connect to a coach or a therapist. We also want to offer resources to our broader community by potentially adding a translation option and to build our unique pay what you can model. We could use the support of the Solve community to access resources, connections, support in building 2.0 of Excel, and a shared community that wants to co-create a world where Black women and women of color can not only survive, but thrive. Hi, I'm Omolara, and my single, poor, Black immigrant mom sent both of her kids to Harvard College. How did this happen? A budget decision. So my mom worked at a university which made the decision to offer free college to their employees. This allowed mom to go to school at night, become a pharmacist and transition us out of poverty. So the extra money she had allowed us to attend better schools which changed our lives forever. But we're the lucky ones. 84% of kids born in poverty will live in poverty for the rest of their lives and we know that these are disproportionately black and brown children. How do we stop this? Just like in my own family story, the answer lies in budgeting decisions, but at the government level. Local governments spend $3 trillion a year, but due to systemic racism, they spend more on school police officers than school social workers, more on foster care than in prenatal interventions. So at Thrive, we built software that identifies systemic racism in government spending. Our equity audits compile everything we know about what it takes to effectively combat poverty, from BIPOC-created programs to evidence-based practices. And we roll all of that into an index. And then we compare the index to what the government is actually spending money on. After the audit, we make recommendations for equity-centered budgeting. So we've developed audits for various government agencies like public schools, parks and rec, health and human services, police, but we're more than a software company. After the audit, we invite BIPOC leaders to work with government officials to vet the measures, review the findings, and co-create final solutions together. Our process is gaining traction. Since January, a dozen jurisdictions in 10 states have inquired about our software. But that is not enough. Because of our highly scalable solution, we have the ability to impact 38 million Americans living in poverty. But we need your help. We would love help from the Solve community in understanding how to navigate government sales cycles and also introductions to other government partners. This is the team. I'm the impact evaluator who knows what works in local government. Phil has his MBA and MPP from Harvard. He manages operations, and Evan is the developer who built the app. And together, we're making sure that local governments make better spending decisions so that my family story isn't the exception, but the rule. How do you solve the complexities, the atrocities of racism? How do you reimagine an anti-racist world when we've only begun to recognize hate? I don't know. But what I do know is what unity looks like. It looks like what I've always known. My church giving my mama food when she needed it. The sharing of vaccines from one distribution organization to the next. The power of organizations coming together to fight against adultification bias. The arm in arm march for black lives. The collaboration to end Asian hate. That is unity. A recent study found that 79% of Black-led organizations did not have a system for collecting data, developing KPIs, or sharing their metrics. My name is Mimi Stiles. I'm the founder and the president of Measure, and this is my team. Since 2015, Measure has been working diligently, directly with organizations to more effectively identify their impact metrics. In order to meet demand for our services, we realized that we needed a software-based solution. That's why we launched Nexus, 
a free cloud-based platform where Black, Indigenous, and all people of color can discover and share data, download dashboards with a racial equity-focused impact reporting feature, champion one another's outcomes on social media, and get notified about other organizations with similar goals. Last year, we tested this concept through the award-winning Innocence Initiative. Five organizations all tethered by one metric of serving youth. The result? Changes in school policy to address the school to prison pipeline. The introduction of House Bill 3485, where we advocated for more transparent disciplinary data in schools. A mentorship program for 10 black girls in Travis County. The training of over 700 lawyers on how to protect black girls and over $200,000 collectively invested in the initiative. Through a fully productized nexus, we can scale to serve hundreds of BIPOC-led organizations and this year and thousands the next. Structural racism results in disparate outcomes for people of color. Achieving health, education, criminal justice, and economic equity requires our support to those on the ground. With Nexus, our anti-racist technology tool, we have the solution that will help them connect and grow. It's our responsibility as those with access to technology to do justice. It's our part. That's unity. Thank you.